Kiste. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Saiba. I am Lemura. And uh, you might have seen me yesterday actually over on stream two playing Dragon Age Inquisition. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, we actually have some uh, special guests with us here today. We actually have some developers from the game. So if you can introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, Zodiac. I'm a designer at uh, Hazelight and was there for all of ATX2 and some of A Way Out and now our current game for more than two years. And yeah. Uh, yeah, go. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Pash Dambek and uh, yeah, I was part of A Way Out and uh, also ATX2, of course. Um, yeah, it's a real pleasure to be here. It's going to be so much fun to see you guys uh, speedrun this. I only saw a little bit uh, in the start in 2021, so uh, I'm sure you guys have some great stuff in store for us. We might have found a lot. But, uh, <laughs> let's just jump right into it. Are you ready? With the countdown? Three, two, one. No. Right, so starting off here, we have the first level with the fuses and Usually you get two fuses for free, but then you have to go hunt this, uh, the last fuse. But we can do a little trick here, where I'm going to disconnect the fuse and then we restart from checkpoint. That means that it, the fuse is still connected to me, so we can now go over, do this again at the start, and then hopefully you'll see me fly into the air. Nice. Yeah, so you see on my side now, it went underneath the ground, <laughs> and when he puts it in, he can just take it out and put it into the other one. <laughs> nice. I, I assumed you would be able to like get <laughs> to the end point of the fuse, but you just skipped all that. So that's yeah, the first we, just, we just stored it instead. Yeah. So now we're uh, immediately into biting the dust. This is the vacuum level, and yeah. uh, one of you worked on this, right? Yeah, it's one of my levels, and I'm looking forward to see you break it completely, I assume. <laughs> so yeah, immediately we're going to jump up on some collision and go out of bounds. So yeah. I don't know if you actually thought much about the gameplay in this area. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really, but, but uh, it's apparently you, everything has collision. You, you play some lights here for us that we can uh, use, or vacuum arms, I guess. Yeah, that was uh, the artist. It's a cool backdrop, but it works for this as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luckily all of this has collision, so we can just climb the wall here. Yeah, all the for, way for reference, for everyone watching, I'm playing as Mei and uh, Cypher is playing as Cody. Just so that you are aware. I'm messing this trick up, but that's fine. Uh, Cypher should be able to get this checkpoint over here now. So we get the checkpoint and we're gonna do FPS. So that's just like yeah, the movement of the game. The reason that we do FPS here will become apparent later, I'll point it out. But uh, it's basically the mashing in the game. So there's accessibility options where you can turn on uh, simplified mashing. So the game actually mashes for you a lot. But uh, we can also abuse that by going to 30 FPS and then we will get even faster mashing basically. And also uh, for this boss we have specific lineups here so that we can just consistently two cycle it. Damn, that's uh, as designed. <laughs> Actually. So yeah, we're just jumping over all of these, avoid all of the hazards and we're gonna do it again and uh, then you're gonna get to see the mashing and stuff and how why it's so much faster on lower FPS. Usually it takes people uh, a while to get what this fight is about and then they die at the end but then once you get it you're able to complete it much faster because you understand it yeah because there's you're a utilizing that because there's a few different phases that you can go through for this right yes but you only see one of them so yeah the reason that where we have the 30 fps is the mashing that at the end it you basically just soup up to his eyes and uh, take them out a lot quicker yeah the reason you can't skip that cutscene is because it's too short and we're loading the next level meanwhile <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, now we Makes know. a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just restarting from checkpoint. That puts us a little bit back, but it also gives us a good opportunity to change the FPS back. So now we have a 120 FPS again. And immediately we go out of bounds. That will probably be a troop that you're going to hear a lot. And this is your level. Yes, this is my level. I did not know you could skip that entire section. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know rain. why there's a rail up here, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the grind section is streamed in, oh. is it? It might be. Yeah, looks like it. Already? I guess. All right, yeah. There we go. He got it. So he got up oh on no, the beam, and, and this checkpoint here is always loaded, so he's just going to hit that, and then RCP. And that gives us our abilities for this level, the hammer and nails. Uh, you're not going <laughs> to see me use the hammer. I can break this if you want. That's all you get. <laughs> uh, but the rest is uh, all on Cody, uh, because... Uh, this next boss here is actually just outside of this door and his death 
box is there, so he's just gonna kill it. I love it. And there we go. That's the whole box. <laughs> <laughs> so usually there would be a big toolbox that is like a long boss fight that you would have to fight. A great just... boss fight, may I say? <laughs> 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 yeah, that was your level. Good. Oh. It's a good one. It was quick. <laughs> And now we're going to do the trick that we call back bike because we go backwards on these rails. And we're just going to hit the last trigger that we need to progress this level as well. The movement to get into this tunnel is actually really precise. Um, but I made it, no problem. We're basically fighting the force because it always wants us to go forward. But uh, we have to then fight the force to go forward. And we have to do that by specific... Uh, All right. I'm pretty sure I hit it, so we're good to go. And I didn't hit the checkpoint, I just hit the trigger I needed. That's why I went all the way into the wall. So yeah, I just spawn up there. The up. And that's the first level. And that's all of chapter one, Shed. That's mm -hmm. that. <laughs> now we're going to get into one of the longer chapters in the game, The Tree. And uh, this first sub-chapter in it is actually uh, very straightforward. I'm going to try and do this... Oh, this here, do this fun movement, <laughs> where Cypher just does the normal way. Uh, here again, we're just gonna slide jump and get out. This is mostly casual, right? I think. <laughs> mostly. I don't think our movement is really intended for that, but you know. Nah, you're just utilizing the movement in a nice way. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit more about the movement of the game. Uh, we can basically slide, and slide hops are like totally broken in this game. It gives you more height than what a double jump would do. So uh, to initiate a slide jump, you would either have to run and then slide, or you can uh, be in a downwards slope. So uh, most people actually bound the buttons really close together. So for instance, myself, I have run on my mouse, uh, and then also slide on my... Whoa, what was that? And yes, you see here, we're going to chain our slides as well to try and, and keep as much of that speed as possible. Otherwise, normal, for just normal movement, the fastest is just dashing and then getting a perfect dash afterwards. And you'll see that by us getting like this, <laughs> this gust of wind around that's us. that's all on you now. Oh, well, I didn't make it. <laughs> we go up again. Or you made it. I, I can, I can, ah, uh, wait, where are you? Over there. Ah, well, <laughs> All right, I'll send it up for you and then, and then we'll keep going. Thank you. There you go. Don't die again this time. I'll try to. Did I make it? I did. Nice. So there, yeah. actually, we got uh, a, an oyster, is what we call it. When we slide and we get a lot of speed off of specific geometry. Yeah, so uh, this plank right here, it has a little slope, but that it gives us so much speed when we are sliding on it. So, uh... Hmm. Yeah, Lim is then going out of bounds here. We're going over to a mini game. And that's because uh, mini games in this game, uh, after you unlock them, you can right. then play them. Thanks. But they will also give the progression all the way up to that point. So now by going into the mini game here, we will then just teleport all the way up to uh, this point with all the progression up to this point also. Oh, I actually forgot to... Oh yeah, you're supposed to change FPS. I am not. Uh, I can do this section normally. Um, you'll also see throughout uh, a lot of the speedrun, there's many sections where um, uh, either, he's just going to go back to the minigame real quick, uh, where either we split up and do our separate things, usually by like the other player hitting, hitting one checkpoint and the other hitting like the next one out of bounds or something, or we have to do it like in, in a more cooperative manner and make sure that we both like get there at a decent time. Yeah, and so a fun quirk about the FPS in this game is that your camera is actually dependent on your FPS. So my sensitivity right now is like four times higher than what I'm used to. So uh, <laughs> if you see my screen just flicker a lot, that's because my sensitivity is way off right now. And again, it's, it's very dark in out-of-bound sections. Uh, sadly, the developers didn't give us lights out <laughs> here. <laughs> you have your own light. That's true. So now I'm going to try to grab a railing through a wall. By going here and then grabbing, I didn't get it. That's also the reason that I have 30 FPS, because you can actually grab this railing through the wall if you have 30 FPS, but it's... There we go. It's actually a lot harder if you have high FPS. So he's going to hit the checkpoint now by the um, 
walkie-talkie, I guess, or something. Uh, and uh, then I'm just going to hit this trigger behind the door, and that's, that's it for this level. So there's a hu huge fight there with like a middle armored B, but you can just skip it by yeah. hitting the trigger and then hitting the end trigger after. We don't care about the fights. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to swap back to uh, his regular 120 FPS right now. And, uh, and then, uh, again, we're just going to immediately go out of bounds. Uh, so there are some specific wall climbs that we can do here, like many specific spots where we can land and, and keep jumping. I, I don't know why I shot that. I don't need light here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, we're just following a specific geometry here to get up. Uh, we want to get up here. There is this whole thing that we can land on. Where am I? Here we go. And then there is a line up here. And I might have missed my spot. But the funny thing is about slide jumps, oh, you got it. There, is no, there is no speed cap going downwards. So you just continue getting speed. So it's the fastest way to travel like straight down. And uh, yeah, now it's, uh, it's time for me to relax. I don't really need to do anything. This is all Cody. Uh, oh, I, well, I need to shoot some things here and there, but like, yeah, I don't really need to I'm focus. I'm steering the boat now, so I actually have to concentrate uh, really optimal us. lines, you know? But uh, May can just relax, just shoot some shots. Do you appreciate this, or is it uh, boring? The long section? <laughs> yeah, to, to not have anything to do. Is it nice to uh, get a break? Sometimes it can I'd be. I'd say so. But uh, it also depends on like how long the breaks are, right? Yeah, in a run. I mean, I'd say up until this point, right? It's it's a lot of stuff that you're doing in a run, so it's kind of hectic. So it's nice to just like have these like ups and downs. So that's one of the things I really like about this run as well is that uh, since it is a co-op game and it's a lot of like, okay, now one player does this and the other does this. Sometimes the other player gets a, gets some downtime so they can relax for a moment and like uh, gather themselves before they have to do like the next big thing, you know. Yeah, just taking optimal lines, going around the left side of that rock. The hitboxes, they're actually like quite tight. You could hit the walls there and then lose some time, but I've done it enough. So how do you guys feel about what you've seen so far? <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's insane. Like, uh, or, yeah, this is like the first level that gets played the way it's meant to be. <laughs> uh, all that hard work. Yeah, like I've been quite involved with the, the movement. Like I didn't actually like work on it, I didn't script it or anything, but I was like involved in giving feedback and uh, yeah, on the movement. And uh, it's really fun to see you utilize it in mm. so many different ways. <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I really love the, the mechanics in this game. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, like, for example, like one of the ones that we haven't touched on yet because we haven't properly used this is like what we call frog jumps. Oh. Um, I don't know what you guys actually call it. Is it when um, you jump and dash at the same time? Yeah, when you jump and dash at the same time. Yeah, we call it the long jump. Long jump, OK. Uh -huh. Yeah, because you can't dash out of this midair, but you. It, it's nice to line some stuff up. Yeah. And, uh, you, you can't ground pound while you're in it as well, so it's really nice for one of those things where you want to slide after, so you would frog jump and then slide, because then you can hold control oh, while you're yeah. in the air. It's, it's designed kind of as a risk-reward thing, where you get a longer and kind of faster jump, but you're locked into it. Yeah. It's very nice. And like <laughs> we, we don't tutorialize it or anything, it's just something you have to discover on your own. It's the same with like the, the slide dash, and the, or the, the slide jump and the, the, the perfect dash. So here all the tornadoes are on a cycle, but uh, I actually messed up a trick a little bit in the previous cutscene. So this cycle is like just free now. I don't need to think about oh, the tornadoes. Oh, I got the trick shot. Ooh, Let's go. Damn. Yeah, you can shoot through that little slit in the planks. <laughs> Saves uh, around two seconds. That was insane. <laughs> but the boat is not done yet. We still have a little boat section here. Uh, a tiny bit more. And now it's slow. Slow boat. <laughs> I guess it's for the scenery of the game. This game has really good scenery, especially in this section coming up here. Oh yeah, no, no this game is gorgeous. If, if any of you here in the audience haven't played it, you definitely should. Or anyone watching at home as well. I agree. Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs>
But this is one of your sections again. Yes, Kinda? yes. Yes, this is one of my levels. Let's see if you play it at all. Oh wait, no, you're not. Well, here we're going <laughs> to go and then we're going to shoot this lantern from far away to give us a checkpoint. Oh. So, uh, you can actually hit that from that distance. There we go. Yep. Ah, what was well. that? There we go. <laughs> so we uh, activate the lantern. That gives us the checkpoint over here. So now we can just uh, restart from checkpoint and then we're going to get teleported all the way over to this point. Whoa. Yeah, so thanks for keeping that in the open for us. <laughs> And now uh, we're trying to hit a cycle, so we just Let's both want to be as fast as possible. Just one person needs to hit it, really. Um, but we definitely want to go through this as fast as we can. Oh, damn. Yeah, not like that. <laughs> I've never seen you die there. <laughs> but exactly, there's a cycle here with the catfish that is coming up here. Uh, and you, if we can, we want to hit the the fish on a good cycle, so it goes through the hole immediately, instead mm. of having to take a whole turn extra. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm just gonna get ready down here to die. He's gonna hit the checkpoint now, and I'm gonna die at the same time. So now we both uh. spawn on the catfish. Ooh. And we got the cycle. Nice, yeah. nice. Now it's shooting straight out the door. That's awesome. Um, yeah, do you have any messages for us? Indeed I do. Um, first of all, I want to welcome everyone who just tuned in to see Cyber and Lemura tell us what the power of friendship can achieve. We are ESA Mother Marathon with the event Summer 2023 and we are this event raising money for Alzheimer Fund. Alzheimer Fund is the national Swedish fundraising organization that is focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia related diseases. They employ a scientific council that grants pr very promising projects into the field um, certain money to do them. And if you send donations our way, you, you support them and you can do so with writing exclamation mark donate in chat or just under the stream. Thank you so much. Back to you too. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. So yeah, in uh, this catfish section, you're actually invincible. So we can just die as uh, many well. times as we want, and we can also both die at the same time, and we're not going to get a game over or anything. We're not invincible. We keep dying, but yeah, like okay. it doesn't matter. <laughs> so That's right. And Lem is actually going to do a little trick here. He's going to die, but I'm not going to die. And that's very specific, because then when he spawns, he's going to spawn lower than me, and then there's mm -hmm. a catch-up element, and I'm going to catch up, but I'm going to keep the speed, and then I'm going to hit the end trigger faster here. Yeah, nice. All right, this is uh, not the way I want to go on the rail. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, we, we want to try and keep our slides out of any of these to keep the speed uh, and keep it going. Uh, here, we're not taking a bridge um, because it's terrible. <laughs> I don't know who made it. Um, <laughs> I have to do it now. <laughs> it's, it's bad to walk on, okay? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Yeah, you had a suspicion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, hmm, it comes sweeping by. Maybe you can catch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh? yeah, I missed it. I was too slow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for this section, um, we're just going to stand in the spot. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to do anything else. So, yeah. so this is a safe spot. <laughs> so we can just stand here now and nothing will hit us. So see this coming by, <laughs> but hitting us. And uh, soon another bee, this one, might be scary, but hitting us. This is the real test, not taking any damage. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> 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 we missed that one spot. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's other safe spots here too, technically, but this is the easiest to line up because there's yeah. this like spec on, on the platform. It's really like easy to identify. Yeah, there's some rust here on the middle ring uh, that you can kind of line up with. Uh, so you can see yeah. right here, there's some right under where May is, there's some rust and you just line up right there. and. You don't take any damage. You're good to go. And here for this fight, it's actually uh, the fight coming up. It's faster to uh, restart from checkpoint. Then the bees will actually spawn faster. And they always spawn in fixed positions as well, so we're ready to shoot them. And you can even target them through the ground wow. and then get some goo on it earlier because Cody's uh, gun actually arcs perfectly over the platform. We're going into the beetle fight now. Uh, every single cutscene in the beetle fight is a restart from checkpoint. Mm. And the beetle is very cute. 
<laughs> yes. So the beetle here is a, like a scripted fight, basically. He's always going to target the same people. Uh, he scans around for who he wants to shoot. So uh, I always stand in a specific spot, so he always targets me. He's going to get him to keep staying on that one. And he's going to fill it up from over here. And I'm just going to shoot it again. Uh, this is just like yeah, optimizing the boss fight, trying to get as much damage on him all the time. Oh, we got the bad RNG. Yeah, so sometimes he jumps, and then he just decides to not jump, and he wants to run instead. Uh, and then he just falls down. <laughs> I have no idea how. But yeah, no, that's, uh, that's the beetle. And now we're riding him. Now he's our ally, because we promised him some nectar. <laughs> Uh, and, and going through this section, the, the fastest is just to keep jumping. You don't want to jump too much because there are gaps that you can fall in. And uh, I just have to shoot some things. Yeah, you get a little speed boost every time you jump. So uh, it's always faster to just yeah, keep jumping in all the time. But we still have to like jump over some gaps. So I will be taking it a little bit safe sometimes. Maybe not. All right. Uh, Oriana, do you have any donations? Indeed I do, thank you for asking. We have a $10 donation by Tainted Tally here. So cool to see you both run this game on the big stage. Lemura and Bytes taught me this game not too long ago, and it's so much more difficult than they make it look. Pure <laughs> skill. Best of luck on the run, heart emoji. Thank you so much. And now audience, make some noise because be, then because we have a $100 donation by Kayo Sodi. Kayo Sodi here. Does anyone want to play this game with me? The game looks awesome. Oh yeah, it definitely does. Thank you so much for your contributions. Keep the donations coming. We are so close to the $30,000 milestone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And that lined us up perfectly because now we're going to go into the B boss fight. Extermination Wasp. here. Was <laughs> boss fight. I just call it B. <laughs> um, yeah, now this boss fight, there is a lot of stuff going on. Um, basically, it's going to come down to goo management on Cody's side uh, and, and just optimizing that, making sure that we have enough goo uh, to do all of these armor pieces. Because all of the separate armor pieces on the boss have separate health values. Uh, and so you're going to see that we're doing uh, some specific things here. We're lining up eno just enough to break this bottom piece, and then he's going to focus on the front chest piece instead. So we want to like slowly do damage to the front chest piece, but then break another piece. So it's it fast for us to finish that later. I see that you found the hidden grind to turn around as well. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so here it's very important that I got the damage on the, on the chest, because then uh, we can actually one cycle a section later in the run. And this damage, uh, it's, I think it's okay. And uh, as it has become known to this point, we get a safe spot. Uh, so no. you can just go on the edge <laughs> of this. You can also stand on all the small, uh, I don't know, it's not pillar. Uh, you can stand yeah, on the fence, yeah. Yeah, on the fence. Uh, but you need to be standing on the top part of them. But yeah, this is just a safe spot that's pretty easy to get to. Just jump around an invisible wall. <laughs> yeah, I need to get ready over here to get some goo on the back to ask. As Lemura said, it's like all about goo management uh, for this fight. I might have shot the sword down here too late. Yeah, not enough on that back. I'm gonna get off so that you can finish it. All right, coming back on. It's probably enough. Yeah, going off. All right, so we're improvising now. Uh, the boss fight hasn't gone as we wanted to. <laughs> uh, normally, if you do it fast enough, you can uh, make sure that we only get so many swarms. Because now you can see we have uh, three swarms uh, that's directly around the wasp right now. One over here on the left side, and then two on the right. Um, I don't remember the... Oh, well, I oh. died. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing we have the safe spot, so now we can just relax and <laughs> you can just respawn. I don't remember the ideal amount. I think he just wanted two of them. So we're, we're definitely, uh, we definitely don't have the swarm amount that we want. Because uh, on the last phase, uh, yeah, then you wouldn't be some have a shield. for me now. So I might be pretty hard to actually hit the, the front chest piece. So this is where like, you know, the damage I talked about earlier could come into play. But because of these shields are here, I cannot hit the, the front piece. There we go. There we go. Um, but the shields are going to be in the way for this last phase. So now we just have to chain, just have to break it, and we can just keep standing in one place and just jump all the time. But there will come a shield here. We just have to spread damage. 
it's always better to get a lot of small clubs instead of getting just one big club because how the damage works uh, with every single club. Uh, it's better to get more blobs than only get one single big blob. And that's the Wasp boss fight. <laughs> um, now coming up is a, is a level that one of you worked on, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm very sorry. Uh, depending on if you're going to skip it or not. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am very sorry. I, again, I don't need to do anything here. Um, so uh, if I really wanted to, I could go get some ice cream, you know? Um, I have the time for that. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm going to... Yeah, you should have looked at the collision around that point, because now we're just going out of bounds. <laughs> And uh, now we're just flying straight to the end. No. There, there is, we, have, <laughs> we have to pick up one checkpoint uh, that loads the end trigger and, and, and I guess preloads the next level or something. Uh, and that's it. You're missing so much good content. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are you saying this is not good content? <laughs> OK, that's pretty good. <laughs> So this is a long section, we're just optimizing the line, going directly down mm. to this uh, golden plane that we can see down here. I think it's like a skybox kind of thing. And then uh, around that area, there will be a, a spotlight, and the checkpoint is right around that spotlight that will load the end trigger, and then we can just go to the end right after. Yeah. They're used, there actually is a faster way to get out of bounds using the recoil mechanic of the, of the vehicle. Because uh, you can make it recoil you through the collision and out of bounds, mm. uh, but it's uh, very RNG. So I think I've only gotten that like once ever, where you just like it just seems like your plane just teleports out of bounds. Yeah, it's it's weird, uh, but thankfully uh, Coconut found that. Oh yeah, you can just fly through the window. <laughs> so <laughs> so how does it feel like seeing your game being broken this much? It's uh, special. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was excited to see the, the squirrel uh, fight, like the, the <laughs> section, but I guess I won't see that then. <laughs> no, sadly not. So where will you end up now? Is it uh, at the very end of this level? or? Yeah, we yeah. go to the end trick of the level where we okay. then get the cutscene to, uh, to go into Rose's room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the house, we can actually see some planks in the distance. Uh, that's the house that's not loaded. But apparently some planks are like always loaded. That's because we put them in the wrong layer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it happens. Yeah, so you can see all our errors here. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we get closer here, under the golden skybox view, you can see the little spotlight where over Maze head right now, uh, and that's where I need to go. And the trigger is like ra right around that point. And that's the this trigger or this checkpoint is the the last one that you would get, I think, before um, before you would get to the house. Um, because when you play this normally, you're not supposed to have this type. Uh, the, the plane kind of like disassembles itself throughout the course of the level. Uh, and so uh, at the end here, you would just be gliding to the end and not using the boosts. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're also going to try out a little fun thing here once we get to the, the cutscene over here. Because we still have uh, character control exactly. during it. So I'll be trying to fly around in the cutscene, if I can do it, but the camera uh. will disconnect from me. So, uh, let's see if I can get it. I'm about to hit the trigger any second now. Alright, let's see. <laughs> so we just had an unloaded cutscene. Uh. How does this feel? This <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 oh, <right>. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Wow. It feels great. <laughs> yeah. But luckily, the next level just loads and we get all the textures back. They're going into Rose's room now. Yeah. Pillow Fort. Uh, short, sweet level. Uh, we're just going to be doing a lot of dash, dash frog jumps. Get around, around a lot of this geometry because it's a bit annoying. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, no, this sub chapter is really short. It, it's just after this uh, hacking station here. So the first thing I always think about in this hacking section, for me at least, is that I need to go right, then left, then right, then left. Or reverse, I think. So, Zodiac, hmm? you worked on the next level that's coming up, right? Yeah. Again, I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm hyped. The more broken, the better. Uh, <laughs> That's the attitude. <laughs> coming up, uh, I'm very proud uh, of this because I found this skip and it saved three minutes in, in the Any Present run. 
Uh, well, Lim found this, and then he doesn't have to do anything. I'm, I, yeah. I'm the one that needs to do everything <laughs> at this point. So, first here, I'm just going to get out of bounds with May. This one we knew about. Yeah. And just kept in. Oh, oh thank for, thank for you. you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Lim is going to go over here, and then he's going to be on the reverse gravity part. And then he can just ground pound down to hit a checkpoint in a further section. Did you get it? I might have uh, gone too soon. I think I did. Yep. No. All right, we'll do it again. Sorry, you get to see it one more time. <laughs> yeah, we did an internal speed run uh, before release, and uh, this is one of the strats we used. Oh, oh. damn, you actually found this? I, yeah, got yeah. The, I got the oyster. Did you oh, see that? Oh, damn. So, yeah. All right, it was worth doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> May can actually get all the way over there by herself. All right, so, uh, yeah, I don't need to do anything. The only thing I need to do uh, is stand and look pretty. And here's here. very important that I grow while I go into the thing, because you're not allowed to usually be small when you are in the gravity field. And, and so, since he grows... And where do you think we're going right now? Base. Base, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I think you're going to the UFO. The boss fight? Yes. Because it's hidden out there. Somewhere. So yeah. we got a checkpoint, and we're at the later half, later third. Yeah, and the boss fight. What? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is the ending of the boss fight, and we just go up here, and the boss fight is done. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> this was my dream. I was hoping they would Ooh. find a way to skip <laughs> most of the boss fight. Because that wasn't a thing when I looked last, like, two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Then they had to do the whole boss fight. And the fun thing about the UFO here is that going diagonal is actually faster than going straight. So you always see Lemora going in a diagonal way over to the monkey. Yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little bit of skill issue there. I couldn't hit my shot, but... Didn't clamp it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining, so... <laughs> I like going faster. Uh, that was all spaced out. Uh... I'm, I'm very biased. It is my favorite level. Uh, so, but I'm excited that we both got to show off the Oyster and to show off the strats successfully. That was uh, cool. Here we're going to hit a cycle. Uh, the cycle doesn't start until we're in this tunnel coming up here. Uh, again, totally ignoring what you're actually supposed to do here, but just, you know, using our movement abilities. Uh, but yeah, now that the cycle has started, uh, going to be doing a lot of dash frog jumps. Ooh. I got it. Let's nice. go. Oh yeah, that was <laughs> nice. uh, and again, uh, we're just going to go out of bounds. Because uh, <laughs> you can do that in many places in this game. Uh, and so it's yeah, uh, very fun. Lim is going to jump up to this railing and then jump up oh. on uh, yeah, these pillows. I don't even know if they're still pillows. Uh, sofa cushions? I don't know. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, do out of bounds movement to go over to this mini game. As we said earlier, the mini game, when we hit it, it activates for us, and then we can oh, nice. warp to it and then get all the progression up to that point. And now, coming up to something that was probably very popular three years ago the fidget spinners. <laughs> yeah, they were basically out of style when we shipped the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is one of the best abilities in the game, sadly. Um, we don't have it for long because we. <laughs> Just go out of bounds again. <laughs> oh. I do wish we had it for longer, because it's just here, uh, and that's it. We tried <laughs> to find ways to get to the end. <laughs> but you <laughs> didn't find that. You couldn't. <laughs> of course you that, that looked like it was made for doing that. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, the whole room is just free to glide all the way over, right? Uh, and here, um, we're going to jump before we land so we don't set our spawn point at the bottom here. And so now, whenever we died, we just respawn back in place where we died. Well, Cypher fell back down, but... I can still get out. Yeah, you can just crouch through the blocks and then get on top. I don't know if that's intentional or not. So I, I died there and spawned back in place, so I can just keep going down to the next section. Um, also, yeah, I guess flashing lights warning and stuff. There's a lot of colors going on here. <laughs> what did you guys think when you made this level internally? Just want to know. <laughs> you mean why it's so wacky? Or <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 
I don't. I guess the kaleidoscope was the inspiration. I I can't. Remember. I didn't work on this level particularly. It was uh, a guy called Victor. Wow. Um, yeah, and just I get do, it. do wacky wow. stuff. Yeah, wacky <laughs> stuff. But that's generally our motto, anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> Going into this next section, it's just a wait. It's just, that's just like a 10 second timer here. We just have to wait it out, and then we're going to get teleported into the next section. And we are uh, restarting from checkpoint here. You can normally do this, just normally, but then we're still going to have the screen effects for a while, and we don't want that. It's uh, a lot easier to see what you're doing when you're just doing this, right? And as you're going to see Lem go for... He's going to try to wrap the block through the ground here from down the side, and then teleport up. <laughs> It's nice that you can interact with things through objects. <laughs> so we can just walk through the floor. Yeah, going up to train station. Train station is also broken. I don't know if that's a common theme in this <laughs> game by this point. Nah. <laughs> um, God damn. Yeah, we just need two dolls. Say, so guys, we just take this guy, mostly just because he's closest. I think you could maybe even do it with one doll, actually. Could you? Uh, maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm going to pick up this backup. Oh, yeah, because he wasn't able to no. pick the doll back up. But normally you can make the doll kiss itself yeah. and then also <laughs> open this for us. Uh, but in case he's not able to pick it up in time, then I also have a backup, just in case. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now we're headed into Dino Land. This one's fun too. Um, for most of this, it's basically just normal gameplay. Except, yeah, most yeah. of it. There's a little section, we'll point it out. I mean, yeah, the beginning here, if you can do that. You got it, I believe. I'm not going to help you. That's a lot of trust. <laughs> oh, you got it. There we go. So I'm trying to get a slide yeah. up off that, uh, that flag right there. But it's actually very annoying because the slope of that flag goes a little bit upwards. So I didn't press space. Oh. What? I thought you were already... <laughs> Yeah, nice. but I accidentally press space. Oops. Oh. <laughs> so we're actually going to see some intended gameplay here for a bit. Exactly, a little bit. Nice. Maybe. Oh, well. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, uh, except this. Uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I accidentally quit out. Uh, okay, keep on. <laughs> so here he's trying to bob up and down, and if we get it, nice. Oh. Yeah. Cliff, cliff through the ground. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that saves a little bit of time instead of having to go down and up because you also need to get the platform out of the way so you can die to teleport up. So uh, that saves a little bit of time. Mm. And um, now Cody's not going to do anything. I could just go AFK here. Yeah. Now it's all on me. So I'm just going to lift that end up to activate the last, uh, to activate the lever at the end. Uh, and I'm just going to, well, again, I did that wrong. Because uh, I did that exact same thing in practice. <laughs> <laughs> So here, Lim, you might see him actually go like, you know, oh, why is he jumping like all the way around like Hello? this? But that's because there's actually some no. death triggers around that area that he's avoiding. Uh. So uh, that's why he's taking this like outside arc around. Uh, I might just slide jump this to make sure. Yeah, yeah be safe. Nice. Here we go. A bit messy at the end there, but yeah, Cody doesn't need to do anything. <laughs> And also thank you for actually putting in cutscene skips in every single cutscene. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it helps a lot when you're speedrunning. Uh -oh. uh, going into the next section here, Pirates Ahoy, where we have the, the pirate ship. This one's actually very fast when you're playing uh, locally or with very low ping. Because uh, the boat is just much more responsive. Playing this with high ping, it's it's kind of uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Playing with some American friends when you have like 150 ping, it's like the boat just like kind of doesn't turn sometimes. But uh, right now, you know, when we're both sitting right next to each other, I think we have like very low ping. Uh, so the, this boat is like really reactive every time we are turning. So here, the boat taking we just take optimal lines, clear out as little as possible while we're going through it. Oh, we can also go this way, I guess. Yeah, we'll just sneak through. That's fine. Coming into this section here. All right, you uh, are. We have to make sure that he restarts from checkpoint there, or else we're going to get a sound bug that lasts the entire game. Yeah, the only way you can get rid of it is by restarting the whole game, actually quitting out of the game yeah. and launching it again. 
which is, uh, I don't know why I kept shooting that early, but it's good <laughs> I missed my shots. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the things, that bomb right there that blew up the whole ship, if you're too early to it, you can then uh, hit it before the boat is actually in the explosion range, and uh, then the explosion will not kill the boat. And um, going over here, we have a little uh, shout out here. We have a member in the community called Hyper, and uh, he's uh, a penguin, so you can explode the penguins. <laughs> but yeah, before we go into this bot fight, I think uh, now would be a good time for a donation. Absolutely, I would love to. We have two lovely donations from the It Takes Two speedrunning community. Mm. The first one being a $25 donation by Papa Jan saying greetings from Canada. First time ESA donator, millionth time proud member of this ITT community. From learning this game with my best friend to watching Lem and the rest of these absolute gamers break it open like an egg, this game and its community are something special. Thank you to ESA for fighting Alzheimer's and to Lem and Cypher for bringing bewilderment and amazement to the deaf faces. <laughs> Put this donation towards Rackmania. Yeah, we make it so. And we also have a $10 donation by Glintz. Happy to see it takes two shown off at another marathon. Good luck to Lemura and Cyper. You two are doing great. Thank you to the de developers for making such an amazing game and being supportive of our community. Hopefully you enjoy watching your game torn apart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, you two, for your two donations. The, these donations are going towards the bonus tracks incentive for Trackmania United Forever. If you want to see that donation covered, then it, it's a few more uh, a few more donations until we can see that met. So keep the donations coming. It's for all for a, the most amazing cause. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Um, for this boss fight, actually. Um we missed our, our shots a bit. We messed up our shots a bit in the beginning here. Um, so we're not going to get the one cycle on, on this face coming in here. Um, oh well. You can kill that tentacle before it flips us, but the oh boat well. was not turning. I just, maybe we might be too close to the wall. But yeah, the, here you're going to see the health bar. It's like, oh, we yeah, one shot away. Just oh. one. But the health, the health in this fight is actually scripted. So the, the one way to get the one cycle here is to get enough damage in the first phase of the fight. Uh, and you have to synchronize all of your shots, but uh, we apparently missed it. Uh, I guess we're just too slow for the tentacle today. <laughs> That's fine. Let's just kill him now. There we go. <laughs> And uh, now coming up is uh, the greatest show. We're going to the circus. Um, are we going to be doing circus things? Probably not. <laughs> so, yeah, what, you also was one of the guys that actually worked a lot of the movement, right? Yes. <laughs> so uh, how do you feel about seeing all of these like crazy shenanigans that we do with the movement all the time to get out of bounds? Uh, I love it. <laughs> Like we, we designed a lot of moves that we knew weren't gonna be used by like the average player, like the the slide jump and the the long jump and the, the perfect dash. So it's really nice to see people actually use it. <laughs> we, yeah, no. we especially like the slide hop a lot. Every time we go out of bounds, you basically use it. There's a couple of places yeah. where you don't, but. Uh, <laughs> but my close. Oh, you got it. Just in time, let's go. Yeah, that door is on a cycle, and if you do this perfectly, you can then get the cycle. We were like one cycle behind, I think, mm. but it still worked out. I went to the Ferris wheel, but we're just doing it quickly by jumping on the side of it. A funny thing about this. Oh. Uh, All right. uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not usually supposed to be on the bottom here, so. Uh, Alright, don't mess this up, don't mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm usually on the bottom here. Yeah. Fun thing, now I'm on the top and I don't need to press anything. This ball will not move unless you actually start moving. Alright, yeah, go. We, we know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, for this ball, normally you would like do some trapeze stuff to get it over on the side, but I'm just gonna put it down on the side here and. He's going to come back, and he's going to land without touching the spawn point, and he's going to die and spawn over here. Nice. 
So yeah, I went all the way over here to touch <laughs> the spawn point, and then I went back. But it was very important I didn't land on the platform, but I landed on a little plank on the mm -hmm. side of it instead. Mm -hmm. So I uh, teleported back. And that's great as show. Nice. Yeah. I, w I was hoping you'd break it a bit, at least. <laughs> so this I is probably one of the like least broken like sub chapters, <coughs> I think. Yeah, yeah the, the guy who made it fail safety it a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to see you break it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've tried, looked into a lot of things here, but no success. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this subchapter, Once Upon a Time, is very short. Uh, all we need to do is just get to the bowling ball and uh, break down the castle gates. So if you look at my screen now, it looks like it shouldn't connect, but it did. And that's because of like uh, desync connection shenanigans. And you can also just stand on nothing right here, just for fun. <laughs> There's the castle gate. Up there. And uh, coming up after this is Dungeon Crawler. Uh, a, a common thing that you're going to see a lot throughout this game is that it like plays with many different genres throughout the game. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Too bad we don't see all of them, like the squirrel fight, for example. Yeah. yeah. It's a 2D yeah. fighter. <laughs> uh, here I'm swapping to a controller just because I, I like controller movement here a lot better since it's like top down ARPG style. Um, but again, um, we're just going to get out of bounds. <laughs> nice, nice. There we go. And I kind of have to shout out Tricksurf here, uh, an old partner of mine in my Portal 2 days. Uh, he actually found that trick to get out, I think. So if I don't shout him out, he will actually scream at me. So uh, <laughs> I just had to shout him out right there. <laughs> and yeah, um, I went on one of these beams that was a bit too high, but that's fine. That's fine. And we're just avoiding some rooms. We don't want to fall, uh, especially not in the room just uh, up above us, because then we're going to soft lock. So we are headed for a uh, trigger down at the bottom here to activate this like chase sequence, uh, which is going to let us actually finish the rest of this level. Anything up until that point, though, we don't need. Like Hello, one is stuck down. <laughs> that wants to us. Run, run, run. Why did you buy that creepy toy for Rose? <laughs> A little bit of concentration here, just trying to maximize our damage that we do to the walls. Uh, it's very important that both characters have like different abilities, so it's very important that, uh, at least like for my ability, that I can uh, defy the snowball deals a lot of damage, but the like small attack here doesn't. But the big fireball, the big snowball that I can shoot, does does a lot of damage. So it's very important as at least Cody to maximize that. I'm actually going to see Lem also going to maximize his damage in this next section by hitting the the troll here uh, while oh, it's invincible. Crap. But he's going to build up his ultimate meter. Oh. He's always going to go to the bottom right chain first, and then he's going to aggro on a player. I don't know which one he usually chooses. Uh, now it's going to do me next. I'm moving here. Yeah, and you just want to him to hit the chains all the way on the around here. But yeah, you can see that uh, Lim actually built up his ultimate, so he's ready to clean out the last fight, uh, of the last hand here when uh, we get to it. And that's the okay <laughs> <laughs> throw. How did I swap back to my keyboard? I'm still supposed to use <laughs> my controller. <laughs> Uh, this is the chess fight. This is RNG. Um, the king will always follow the closest player, and uh, the queen will kind of just go where she wants, because uh, she just chooses a random tile and then always swaps between moving diagonally and straight. Um, so, you know, that's that's great. Uh, <laughs> ideally, we want them to be close so we can use our ultimates uh, to hit them both at the same time. Um, clearly, that's not happening this time. Ah, here we can get a tiny bit, I guess. That's yeah, better than As you all know, Marathon RNG, <laughs> we're getting horrible RNG this time. Oh, well, a little bit good here, maybe. 
Oh yeah, no, this is bad. <laughs> That's really bad RNG. Uh, you want them to stay as close together all the time, because you also have splash damage that you can do to them, so you can basically get double damage, but uh, they went completely opposite sides of the arena that time. All right, so um, whose idea was it to do this? Definitely to Joseph. <laughs> yes. All right, we didn't uh, <laughs> we didn't get get to catch QD, so we're gonna try that again real quick. Um, but yeah, no. Each time we run this game, um, we are traumatized <laughs> uh, over and over again. Oh, wow, he's hit it earlier. Okay. Yeah, usually we would hit it by now. Yeah, there we, there go. we go. Uh, and you're gonna see why we're gonna be traumatized. Um, but uh, just like a tiny, quick, like spoiler warning. I'm just gonna mention like why we're doing this. Um, because how we turned into dolls is because our daughter cried and then you know made us turn into dolls, kind of deal, right? And so obviously the solution to turn us back is to make her cry again. Her and so we're gonna destroy her favorite toy. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, I don't know what you guys thought about this uh, <laughs> doll here because there's actually a little speech to this doll this time. Yeah, we have a copy pasta. Exactly. Uh, and you might see it in chat, actually. So yeah. <laughs> hidden, hidden behind a veneer of cuteness is a dictatorship. <laughs> the queen monitors her people through surveillance that go that extends into space. Oh, I need to do some gameplay here. Nice. <laughs> she manipulates her people with the facade of being a cute elephant while executing executing and torturing her political <laughs> opponents to the very end when the revolution catches up with her with her she is pleading through this uh, fake persona to save her own life while being completely unfeeling to the thousands that perished in the dungeons <laughs> <laughs> feels better now <Yeah>. exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have it you know <laughs> you read it every time we play this <laughs> yeah. hope So yeah, we're just um, throwing her off, you know, took her ear and, and leg and stuff. Actually, there is a QD plushie. Uh, if I had the opportunity, I would have uh, had one to do a visual demonstration as well, but sadly, <laughs> I couldn't obtain one, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no major skips there. You want nah. to make sure you saw exactly. all of it. <laughs> one day, one day we'll find something. <laughs> we'll keep trying. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah, that was all of Rose's room. So now we go into the next oh, I need to do. So sometimes when you load into a new area, your sensitivity will be fully wrong. So I just did a very quick pause and unpause there to get my sensitivity back. I couldn't turn my camera, basically. I don't know why that happens. Oh, I don't know either. You should know. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I coded the camera, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, okay, what? I saved it. Yeah, what, what we're curious about here is if you use the, the clone ability a lot to oh, re yeah. reach further than uh, intended. I mean, yeah, we, we're basically skipping this whole starting section, right? And uh, this next uh, clock town and stuff, I actually found a skip here too. Uh, I'm proud of this one as well. Because uh, beforehand, when you did any percent, you had to like go through the... What am I doing? Uh, you had to go through the whole uh, town and stuff, and like you know, you're supposed to like follow the dolls around uh, to their ending point. Uh, but I'm gonna put down a clone here, and then I'm gonna head over to the Hell Tower. Oh, oh no! Um, I made that because <laughs> it turns out that this cutscene makes you invulnerable, and uh, I think I missed the timing. <laughs> Let me, uh, let's rewind and do that again. Um, so, uh, <laughs> we're going to head over to the Hell Tower. <laughs> um, and this time, I'm not going to mess it up. <laughs> oh, I dash. Because she's participating. I'm ready. In the cutscene, I guess. Are you yeah, ready? Right. So, yeah, yeah, Liam is hitting those two uh, buttons real quick. And then this cutscene will actually uh, deactivate or like just make us invincible while the cutscene is going. So there was a death plane on the railing, but we just fall through the death plane. So now we are out of bounds. Yeah, so this lets us just do this. Because if we jump here, you die because of the water. <laughs> uh, so that, that one's really cool. The only unfortunate thing, of course, is that the cutscene is unskippable. Um, but, you know, we take it. I love that 
the hell tower is used in the speedrun. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and uh, now the problem is, we can't just go straight to the towers, because the towers aren't loaded in. Uh, so if we enter them now, like any geometry inside is just, it's not there. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to take the birds, and we're going to go back into the town, and now we're going to be using Cody's ability to get out of bounds. I'm useful. <laughs> So we're going to line up underneath here. And then we're going to use the uh, build yeah. and get out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to fly under the map. And it's actually very important that we fly up around these rocks here. And then we're going to hit this black plane. And uh, we're headed to the right tower because this one doesn't have that many volumes that force the bird up. The left one is completely covered in it. Ideally, we would have finished the left one instead because that one's on a cycle and this one's just easier to do. But uh, this lets us get a checkpoint at the end once we're done with it that like actually catches up our progression so we can finish the other one because then the other tower actually loads in right so now we restart from checkpoint and now the other is loaded in and we can just go there and now we're actually on cycle uh, this next tower is running on a cycle from when you restart the checkpoint right there so it's very important that we do this optimally you do have a little bit of leeway you don't need to like be Falling fast over here. Okay, I actually said that, and then I'm <laughs> are we gonna miss cycle? <laughs> maybe. You do have a little bit of leeway, but this might be close now. I think I dashed one more time than I should have there. I mean, worst case, it's like it's not the worst, so but you know. All right. Oh. Oh, we made it. Yeah, so like that. <laughs> nice. That was really close. What the fuck? I mean, I we did it. It was, it was fine. <laughs> and uh, now we just need to finish um, this. Gets rid of this force field, uh, and that's gonna be this. That's like, that's gonna be it for this. It's subchapter. intended gameplay right now, right? Yeah, I mean, this is intended basically. I yeah. mean, we're just getting into the the gates early, I guess. Oh, I didn't get. You can actually separate the, these dolls, so the one of them is like on the lower part, and you only take one of them up. Um, yeah. Now going into the next chapter, there's going to be. It, it start on, starts off basically. Um, there was this crushing wall and stuff. That we just had to go through, and after that, it's a bit of a walking section. So, do we have any time for some donations or something? Yes, we do. We have a $5 donation by YTP Renewed 190 saying, a chess fight? If only Zelda had chess fights, then any illegal move could be met with, this is illegal, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much for your $5 donation. And we got an anonymous uh, $35 donation where uh, $15 go to the uh, Uncharted Strikes Fortune incentive and $20 go to the Trackmania United Forever incentive, where we try to unlock a showcase of three bonus tracks and extra content. So if you want to see this met, we are about $700 away and you have a l still a, a bit of time to meet that. So keep the donations coming. It's donation, it's exclamation mark donate in chat. Thank you. Back to you two. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, this is just a long walking section. We're just holding D right now to just walk. It's the fastest way to get over. We haven't found a skip for this yet. I can't even dash, right? <laughs> no, uh, it's just walking. Yeah. It's, it's pretty. pretty, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a thing that can happen. If you die in the earlier section just when the transition oh. happens, you will then be on a different layer in that walking section. And then when you need to go to do the screw, you cannot get out of that layer. So you'll actually just be stuck uh, I forever I until you restart again. Um, yeah, so Cody doesn't need to do anything here. Uh, this is all on me. So can I get any uh, smiles in chat? <laughs> um, but don't pay attention to Cody. Pay attention to me, okay? Exactly. <laughs> so uh, Lim here, Mei, is going to yeah, jump out of bounds, use the clone ability. The clone ability is like completely broken. Uh, oh, yeah, it's very nice. So yeah, we're going to go to this both uh, arena, but we need to go onto the other side of it to hit a, uh, a lever, I guess. Uh, so we're going to use the teleport abilities to the full potential here to gain as much height as possible. And that's actually a strat with the, the teleporter, where if you are standing on the ground when you teleport back, you get your jump back when you uh, go in. So you see Lem landing on the ground there, then he gets his jump back when he then teleports. 
to get even more height. So this is like one of the abilities that will that just completely breaks uh, the whole movement in the game. There he's going against like two invisible walls, and if you're going in the corner of uh, invisible walls, you yes, sometimes can land uh, <laughs> land on some ground and then still get your jumps back. So. Uh, I hope you guys weren't expecting to see a bullfight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was actually expecting something <laughs> along these lines. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I feel like uh, May has a lot of the cool abilities in the game. Yeah, May get all the fun stuff. I'm just the emotional support <laughs> that uh, <laughs> runs with you. Yeah, she's <laughs> definitely cooler. Any reason for that? <laughs> We haven't even no. seen the most broken no, ability. I it's not intentional, no. It's kind of coincidence, yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I agree, but... So I, he went inside the elevator now, and I just hit the trigger from outside. Oh, I don't have a good feeling so this is one of the sections where we actually have health. So you can see on screen right now we have a health. But I can actually just die. But since Lem is in a safe spot right now, he cannot die, and then we can never get a game over. So this is like, you know, one of the times where, like, you know, I go get a drink at home <laughs> because it's a little bit long. <laughs> Takes a while to go through, yeah. Um, but I mean, while it's going up, do we have time for a donation? Yes, we do. We have a $25 donation by Peachy saying, thanks for running a great event. Brr. Thank you so much for your donation. And I would like to remind everyone that you have like uh, roughly a thousand opportunities to support our event. For example, if you donate a minimum amount of five dollars, you're eligible to win a, a prize of a Hollow Knight Myla minifigurine. Or if you go all in and donate a whole two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars towards Alzheimer Fonten, you can you are eligible to win a grand prize of a custom ESA PlayStation 5 that is covered in the glorious ESA purple and yellow. Thank you so much for your donations. We are so close to 30,000k. I'm sure we can still make we can make this during this run. Don't you agree? Yeah. Ooh. That was good timing because now the elevator ride is over and we are going to do fast cycle. Um, it is possible to just not do the cycle at all and do what we call zero cycle, but that is uh, for advanced people, that is not me. Uh, <laughs> Those who have done it, they, they know who they are, and they're probably in chat <laughs> vibing right now. But <laughs> uh, it's not something that I'm going to try and go for, uh, but there we go. So that thing is on a cycle, swinging back and forth, and catching it on the cycle when it then flings us is uh, yeah, the fastest we can do. It's, it's always scary when you jump here. No, 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 it's safe. Don't worry. Uh, so if you jump too much, you die. Yeah. Just, um, so that bird has like there's death planes all around it. So if you actually jump too much, you'll then uh, go and hit one of the death planes and die there, and have then have to do it all again. Also, an interesting thing that I'm wondering about for this is uh, you can't ground pound here. Yeah, this is a section where like right now I'm trying to ground pound, and you cannot ground pound. Hmm. Not sure why. Maybe no. Just to make it more cinematic. <laughs> you're not messing around as much. You're just. Uh, Jumping and dodging. <laughs> but you're still allowed to slide, which is like kind of weird. So the button still works. So if I, yeah, like, I mean, do yeah, movement, just, uh, then I'm allowed to slide. But I cannot ground pound. So if I just ground pound, I cannot. Yeah, yeah the, it's just the, the ground average pound capability that's blocked. Yeah, the average player doesn't slide ever, so. <laughs> <laughs> How do we stop it? This whole clock section is probably like one of my favorite uh, places in, in terms of all of the cinematics and uh, the environment. I love like how everything looks here, especially this area coming up. What's funny about this level is that the ending tri trigger for it is always active, um, but the death plane on this is like coded to be based on like your last safe position where you were standing or something. So I, it, unless we're able to find some Weird spots that you can stand and like reset that. I don't think we're ever gonna get down to that trigger. And here you can do a little fun thing stand here, and then I crouch and I walk right, and I just keep holding right. 
<laughs> and, you, and, and you skip both of them. And then I just need to dodge this one one swing. That's cute. Yeah, this whole environment, I just, I love the clock. Yeah, I know, it's really cool. For uh, game reasons, we are actually playing on low settings uh, to get FPS because the FPS, as I, we mentioned earlier, is uh, like your mouse sensitivity is tied to your FPS, so you want stable 120 as much as you can. But playing this on like high details, it just looks even better. We're also just, uh, you know, vibing in this corner because yeah. you don't die. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah. If you're in this corner, you only take two damage. So every time you take damage here, you lose like three, like one quarter of your uh, hearts in this section. But you only hit two things in, uh, if you're standing in this corner. But you die in every other corner. I've tried. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, we're going to have like a, a weird skip that was found not too long ago here, where um, going up here, if you pause, it just teleports the character up and we get the checkpoint immediately instead of having to go through that whole cinematic. That's weird. <laughs> and here I'm going to try and go for two psych... Oh, that's not going to hit it. This is very ping dependent, but you are able to hit two off the clocks with the same bomb. So on the host side, it would hit one clock and on the client it would hit the uh, other, right? Nice. Uh, but since our ping is really low, our bombs are like overlapping a lot, so... Right. You can really feel the difference if you're playing with someone like, let's say we're in, you're in Sweden right now, but if you're playing with someone in America, you can really feel a difference there. And that skip is like practically free if you have high ping. But since uh, we are so close together, it's just practically impossible, <laughs> I think, at this point. I mean, it's almost a local connection, so. <laughs> is it allowed to like, simulate high ping for that? Um, okay? <laughs> actually, there's a discussion in the ATX2 community right now about like VPNs and stuff, so mm. uh, we will see what the outcome of that is. <laughs> so here I'm just hitting that specific piece to get my spawn point on top. And I'm just going to go over here. Yeah. Oh, damn. On my screen, it didn't look like it connected. And this piece, and this is the last piece, now it's just going to... Yeah, send me down that way, yeah, not the other one. <laughs> and it puts us here. So now we did the ending, and I can just hold D at this point, and then when I actually gain control, I just immediately start go. Otherwise, yeah, we're just going to be running from the explosion here, right? So I guess we have time for a quick donation, right? Yeah. Oh, you got no idea. The support from the community is so great right now. We have a $250 donation, everyone. Make some noise there from JoyPunk212 saying, let's go to 30,000K and let's get those Trackmania bonus tracks too. I agree. Keep the donations coming. Right now, we are less than $500 away from meeting that incentive. Thank you so much. Until then, back to you. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. So going into the next area, this uh, snow globe. Snow globe the, is pretty. Yeah, the, you can get ice gates and they can be completely broken. But uh, first we're going to spawn and then just do some normal movement. This is intentional, right? Yes. <laughs> That's why the collision is so precise on those trees. Exactly. Yeah, because you, you left this in just for us, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and also these <laughs> invisible walls that we can jump on up here. <laughs> totally intentional. And we're going to get some ice skating physics. We're going to see a lot more of that throughout this whole chapter. Um, but ice, ice skates does, uh, it does a lot of weird stuff with your movement sometimes. And, and we're definitely going to see like different uses for it. Oh yeah, but you don't actually have the skates now, officially. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here we hit the checkpoint and that will then teleport us up. And usually as a community, we time everything by in-game time. So that checkpoint uh, restart is actually faster with in-game time. But it might be around the same time for a marathon. Did he say we have to ring the bell? Yeah, yeah but our loads are so fast uh, right now anyway that I, I honestly don't think that it's, it matters too much. Uh, oh, some weird lag spikes for me. 
we were aware that you could get over here, but we struggled so much with actually executing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think a few people got it a few times after trying a lot, but... <laughs> All right. but so, so you knew you could do it, and then you still left it in? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We did it with a lot of stuff. Yeah, so uh, I assume you guys then know about the trigger that we're, yes. we're headed for, right? It's yeah. hilarious. There is just this, like... A random trigger up in the mountainside uh, that conveniently lets us just, you know, progress the game. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's like it was left there like a, as a just in case and then forgotten about or something. My, my guess would be that the, the path the gondola takes was changed. Like it went there before, but then they added a new trigger for the new path. Uh, but and then they, they just forgot it. to remove <laughs> the trigger. So I, I found it at one point, but I didn't tell the, the owner of this level. So it was like, I, 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 wanna, yeah. I want the speedrunner to find this. Thank you. <laughs> so here you actually see me interact with both sleds. So I first went over on the right side, and then I went over on the left side. And that's because you can actually link both of them together. So now I have the properties of both sleds. And you'll see uh, that could come in uh, hey, handy here. Maybe. I'm I'm also going to try and go out of bounds here. It's really, really hard to do it at the beginning. Um, I'm going to try my best, but... Oh, oh so, close. Oh, so close. So close. Uh, you, you are able to get out of bounds and get stuck on the side. Uh. There was one time, sadly I wasn't able to record it, but there was one time I was somehow able to drive the cart over to the right and hit the trigger that would send you into the whale mouth from the beginning. Um, but the consistency of that is, uh, you're, you're not getting that. <laughs> <laughs> so now also one of the properties about being linked is that since I touch the other sled, I'm getting the boost when Lem is hitting the boosters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's just the bobsleds to the end of this level. Exactly. Uh, so I think we have time for some donations. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We have a fifth, lovely $50 donation by 8B Waffle with no comment, but that is going towards the track media incentive. Also a $15 donation by Ulf saying, loving this run. Thank you all for so much for the entertainment and for taking your time to Marathon for Charity. Thank you so much for your donation. And we also got an anonymous $25 donation saying, thanks for a great show so far. It Takes Two was one of my favorite games for the last few years. It's so great to see it blitzed. Thank you so much for your donations. Keep them coming. Right now we are still less than $500 away from meeting it and I believe in you all that you can do that. Thank you all. So this level, uh, this level is actually kind of unique because consoles have a console exclusive skip here that is just called PC skip uh, because uh, they can just get to the end of the end of the level and trigger the next level. No problem. Uh, that has to do with like some some like loading stuff. It, it doesn't have enough memory to load the next level. So it forces it on the loading screen and stuff. Right. But on PC, um, yeah, we can't do that. So we have to actually do this level the way that you're supposed to do. Um, so yeah, you this <laughs> is intended. <laughs> this is totally intended for sure. <laughs> I'm basically trying to like hit a sub-pixel point to get my jump back at this point. Yeah, he's trying to do one of the hardest wall climbs in the game. There is some very specific geometry that he can hit and just get up there. I am out of bounds and headed to another section because uh, I'm going towards a button and then I'm basically just going to wait for, for Cypher to do this. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> Good job. I was worried about that one. That one, like, sometimes you get a first try and it just feels so good, and sometimes mm -hmm. you actually spend, like, 50 tries on it. <laughs> it's just hit or miss. <laughs> so that was, what, like, around 15 tries? Was okay. <laughs> but you got it. <laughs> All right, we have to remember to keep count here. Two. Three. Four. All right, so it's in this one. All right, so I jumped and ground pounded while that cutscene happened. So now we hit both of them at the same time, and then we just RCP and uh, 
we spawn down here and both of them are done. So. And uh, while we're going down to this fish here, we're just going to do some basic wrench movement. Uh, do you have anything to read out? Yes, I would like to say that, late, gentle folk, we have done it. We have officially reached 30k for charity now. That's thanks cool. to your most generous Let's contribution go. to Vault's Alzheimer's. And with that milestone being met, you can look forward to something amazing. We've hosted by Big John and with our usual contesters, Huts and Paulister, later this evening. Thank you so much. Ooh. I knew we could do it. I knew we could get there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, this is basically just intended gameplay. We have to put the wrenches on and yeah, and to wrench wrenches. things. And uh, this fish is uh, very lovely. It's called Lenny in the community. I don't know. Did you have an internal name for this fish? I don't think so. No, I it's just the anglerfish. Yeah, anglerfish. <laughs> we call it Lenny. I like that more. <laughs> It's official. Yeah. That was official? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> For this last one, we just needed to to be on there. Yeah, we just need to connect the wrench to it, and then we can restart from checkpoint, and then it will give us the progression as if we turned it all. And then we can go back and then turn this central wrench to a... Uh, I don't even know the story in this area anymore. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> this... this um, this is where you proposed to me. Oh, oh yeah, it was. It was the. <laughs> I see. Yeah, that's the story of the game that uh, Cody uh, proposes in this area. Um, but yeah, um, looping back to like PC skip and stuff on console, you can just get to the top of this tower early, hit the buttons, and you load the next level. You can also get up here on PC if you want to, but. When just you then hit uh, the triggers, then you just like don't load the next level. So you have to actually hit the previous yeah. triggers for it to load. Now we're on to slippery slopes. This one is going to be uh, a lot of fun because we're not going down. We're going, uh, we're going, we're going up. Uh, if, I can, <laughs> if I can do it. <laughs> we're going up to go out of bounds instantly. All right. I'm having bad luck with my movement here. There we go. Mm. So usually you're not really around. Uh, you don't want to go here normally, but uh, there's still like some good collision here, and you actually can, can get some quite good speed by uh, jumping on all of the snow here. But there's a lot of concentration here, trying to like jump in the optimal places, and also uh, jumping over like gaps like this one coming up. Yeah, I mean my my slides have not been optimal so far, but. <laughs> You know, as long as I get there, I'll take it. I will take it. So do you know where we're hitting right now? Uh, I assume the... Or? Yeah. Are you already going to the ending trigger? No. <laughs> the ending trigger sadly isn't loaded at this point. Okay. I, I wish though. <laughs> <laughs> well then I'm not sure. Yeah, there is this section down here that is still loaded. So uh, where Cody is at now, he should have hit the checkpoint. I'm also hopefully going to hit so it. So you can now. see May here going off the ledge, but then trying to hit some ice while going off. Oh, uh, then well, Because yeah, if you're falling while you have uh, ice skates, you're going to fall a lot faster. Mm. But uh, you can also just ground pound there, but then you're not going to hit the platform. But uh, since I already hit it also, he doesn't need to stand on it. Mm. And now we're going to try to chain together a lot right, of speed well on this railing. Ooh. You to can go do it. around the house. Ooh, I don't know if that makes it. No. no. All right, let's try again. Yeah, you need a lot of speed for this. Basically, trying to like cancel your rail grabs. Right, what the? You're not getting speed. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm not getting it. It doesn't save that much time, but it's cool. All right, hold on, hold on. I'm pressing the wrong buttons. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting it here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to die real quick to spawn up with him as well, since he got it. Oh, nice. It, it, again, it doesn't save much time. Realistically, it's probably only worth going for maybe one or two times. Um, it did look but it's really cool. cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> You're flying. And then we skip breaking this part. We skip the trigger that breaks all of this. So 
Thank you. And we need to shout out Glint here because this skip is actually called Glint Skip Skip. Because we found he found a skip and then we found a skip to the skip. So that's why it's Glint Skip Skip now. So uh, shout out to Glint. Yeah, Glint is awesome. Teaching us a lot. Basically the master of this game. To me at least. <laughs> And he's even in chat right now. Say hi to Glint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we see some uh, Haysliders in the, in the chat too. So shout out to ooh, the Haysliders team. Hello, Haysliders. <laughs> Magnus attraction is getting stronger. All right, so here we're just going to kind of uh, slide along this wall and jump over. And here I'm going to try to crouch before I hit this magnet, because then when I land, I can then keep sliding, and then we can get all, all the way over here. Nice. And uh, in, uh, in one go. Oh. And here we're then going to chain together, going to each other, but also get more height out of it, and in that way, go out of bounds. Of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, now we're just walking towards the ending trigger. Uh, <laughs> so I think this is a good time for some more donations. Oh, I would absolutely love to the support from the community. It's just amazing right now. First, we have a, and make some noise audience, a $100 donation by 8-Bit Buddha. <laughs> Shoutouts to my fellow Hazeladers with the awesome commentary and these insane runners for breaking the game completely. Keep it up, everyone. Thank you so much for your generous $100 donation. We also have a $56 donation by, uh, it's another donation by YTP Renewed 131, saying, oh, that snowy environment looks so enticing under the current heat wave. I tend to, I totally agree. Thank you so much for your donation. And another $50 donation by Yatugami saying, I love ESA too much. Everyone is so great. Also, if you haven't played this game yet, what are you waiting for? Let's go, Cyber and Lemura. Thank you so much for your donations. Keep them coming. The, we are still here the entire week, so the show isn't over yet. Thank you, thank you. I am struggling in doing this right now. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is a really hard trick, actually, going up on this plank, and then go. you have to slide, or like holding your crouch button so you slide, but you need to do it before you actually do the jump. So then when you jump out and land back, then you will get the slide immediately when you land back. Yeah, so for this level in particular, um, both of us have to hit all of the checkpoints. Mm. And the player ahead can't leave the next checkpoint until the last one has been triggered. Because it's not loaded in, I think. Yeah, I think people do it a bit differently. <laughs> If they play normally, they probably do. So here you see Lemura going down there, and that's to hit the checkpoint. You see the saving in the corner. That's always uh, good to look out for. I'm gonna try and get. So for instance, here I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be waiting here until he then hits the next checkpoint before I go down. Because if I missed it, even though I don't think I did, but just for safety, I'll then be standing here. Mm. And do yeah, see the saving it. in the corner, and then now I can jump down. And then here we hit another checkpoint in the corner here. We see another saving, and now... This is also one of the abilities where it's like completely broken being May. So I'm basically oh, yeah. just the emotional support animal together with uh, the executioner <laughs> over here. He's like, it's gonna tear through everything. Again, May has all the cool abilities. <laughs> and we're gonna see why the ability is so cool later. Even uh, like here. Look yeah, the, you're look actually gonna see it here. If you look at what I'm about to do now, so I'm gonna slide jump here, and I'm gonna use the scythe to gain height. Uh, so the scythe can, <laughs> yeah, gain height on any vertical surface. <laughs> I don't think that was uh, <laughs> the intent behind the scythe, but <laughs> it's very useful. Yeah, I, uh, I knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> and you left it in? Yeah, but it wasn't my job to fix it. But <laughs> <laughs> so you wrote it down on a notepad somewhere and then no one fixed nah, it? No, I just didn't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, so <laughs> didn't leave a paper trail. <laughs> what a death we have. I think you might be going into a very important meeting when you get back yeah. to work. <laughs> <I'm in trouble. laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this whole level, uh, you're actually supposed to like meet up with these cute spiders and, you know, they help you, you help them kind of deal, and then, um, yeah, we never meet them. Which is kind of yeah. sad because they're Aww. really cute. Oh. I heard one of you actually worked nice. on the spiders, right? 
I, I prototyped them, yeah. but I handed them off pretty quickly. But oh, okay. They're cute. But yeah, no spiders. So again, we're, th this whole uh, area is filled with like water and stuff. We're just trying to avoid all of that as much as possible. And again, since our where we die, we kind of just like spawn back in in place. Yeah, we we don't have a set checkpoint. So where we die, we just like spawn right underneath. All right. There we go. That's also the checkpoint. Okay. Fair enough. I was a little bit too slow there. If you actually like both people get to that point, then uh, you can do this fight where everything is still unloaded. But because uh, I failed a little bit getting over to this point, we had to do the restart from checkpoint. It is actually possible to one cycle these, uh, but like May's attack pattern is kind of random. Uh, so I'm trying to like manipulate it to like do it quicker by like spamming attack and dash to like cancel the attack mm. kind of deal, but. Um, yeah, it, it hasn't been that many times I've gotten a one cycle on them, but it feels really cool when you get it. <laughs> so it is very rare for sure. Yeah, she probably just plays a random animation. <laughs> I think you're overlapping the animations, and then you allow May to then attack again before her cooldown comes off again, or something like that. Yeah, here May is just watering the plane, and we have a little bit of a tower defense section. So you protected me for a bit and... But really cool, you can actually grab this from all, all the way over here. So you get this really long uh, strand just going all the way over. Now we're going to go into a, a really cool subchapter, uh, Trespassing. Exactly. Um, and this is where May's ability will be shining for, oh yeah. all, for all his money. <laughs> Uh, normally in this section there's going to be like a lot of like stealth gameplay, you're supposed to avoid the moles kind of deal. Um, I guess there is, we're going to see the sound meter a tiny bit, but it's not going to be for too long. <laughs> uh, so again, I can kind of just, you know, climb geometry and stuff, get, get where I'm not supposed to go. Uh, I'm going to get out here, I can crouch underneath that to get out. And yeah, the scythes just go up here and I'm out of bounds. Like so since I don't have the size, I cannot do all of that. So I need to take a whole different route and my route is usually slower. I like how the crouch has some use cases. Yeah, you're sliding like under some stuff. <laughs> it's yeah, actually yeah. used like quite a bit in uh, the casual mode, I think. You like need to crouch to get through some areas. But uh, I'm just going to play that safe. I liked how you during the vacuum boss used it to line up the cans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in the vacuum boss, it was nice. It gave you like a good spacing between them, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, we get the most important section here. We get the mole butt. Mole butt. I'm not gonna go to it though. If it was Cody that was here, it would like climb up like next to it. Yeah, I would have to climb up next to it. But uh, now Lem is going, and I actually don't want to go here because if I trigger the sound meter, we get a basically game over, and have to restart from checkpoint. Or if I then fall and actually fall for too long, then the camera will be really weird. But look at the ability here for the for May. He can scale this wall, just climb up the stone. <laughs> <laughs> it's super broken. And then I'm just gonna slide. Oh well. Uh, and then I'm just gonna slide <laughs> jump uh, up here <laughs> and get on top of this section. Um, and yeah, now we're, now we're kind of just going towards the end, uh, towards right. the 2D section. So you're even skipping the chase. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> At least a lot of it. We do see the ending of it, actually. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, am I? Mm. I was trying to get a cool oyster off of that to like send me like down here, but you know. Now we're back inside where you're supposed to be, uh, and soon actually we're gonna be picking up a checkpoint. You can finish the level normally uh, without like RCPing here, but it's just it's just faster because the moles spawn better, so. Yeah, we just want to get to the end here, and it's faster when both people go to the end, because then the I think the slow motion part here goes a little bit faster or something. It yeah, because the moles are closer. The yeah. They're not for because normally if you do it without doing that, they would be further off the screen, so it takes longer for them to get here. Mm. So we got a little bit of the mole chase uh, chasing, but <laughs> only the very end of it. Yeah. 
now we're getting into the frog, uh, frog part. Are you ready? Um, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> um, all right. So we can just Whoa. scale an invisible wall. <laughs> and we out of bounds. <laughs> so I don't know how that works. We like wiggle <laughs> against the wall, uh, and then you just fly out of bounds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm struggling with it right now, but yeah, you kind of just wiggle up against that tree collision or something, and then, and it just works. How do you find that? Like you just, I have no play idea. around it's forever. Everywhere. This I was found before my time, so I have no idea. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just gonna get a mini game here. It's really nice that you have these mini games. <laughs> Uh, let's just do a lot of things, because normally this chapter, uh, you would not be able to just go to the end. Yeah, but the minigame lets us do that. Yeah, I remember there being like a big debate at the start of the of speedrunning this game about if you could use this minigame warping. Ooh. Infinite load? Tactics. Think, yeah. Oh. Sometimes the loading screens are just stuck. So we might need to actually disconnect and connect here real quick. Yeah. So, that's yeah. uh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're just gonna disconnect and reconnect, and then it, uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> so we get to see a little bit of the menu here. Wow! Yeah, because that wasn't visible earlier. That's true. <laughs> All right. And to get into the game again, we just need to press the continue button, and then it will uh, put us where we just were. But we already uh, at the frog at the start of the frog area. But since we unlocked the minigame, we can just instantly go to uh, the snail part again. Yeah, because our minigame warp works uh, in terms of the rule set. It's as long as you see the banner, you're fine. And you can minigame warp. And then when we got here, we also got a normal we checkpoint that spawns us up here. Get so up to that window. this okay. gives all of the, the frog the section. <laughs> And again, here we just need the two. Uh, technically, only need the right one, uh, but we do the both of the ones to the right just to be safe. All right, you made it. You could do a little bit of fun slide down the pan, so you get like a little speed boost towards the the trigger where you need to press. And here we can actually grab this uh, shovel uh, by just jumping up to it. <laughs> There's yeah. an invisible wall there that tries to block you from doing it, uh, but if you do a slide hop, you get more height and Slide jumps are powerful. Yeah, they're really powerful in this game. Uh, yeah, so we don't we don't care about the bottom area at all. We just care about the top sections here. There's another like big chunky flying boy. So, ah, oh. so close. close. Yeah, I, I was really hoping I could get a, a one cycle on them because that would have been really cool to show off. But oh shit. So again, I, I grabbed the wrong uh, <laughs> the wrong railing. Yeah, I'm just watering this, following our line down, and then I'm going to wiggle on the way back up, and then he's just going to fill it up with flowers. We have some more enemies to kill and stuff. Um. Yeah, I'm wiggling my camera a little bit, that just to make sure that like flowers, they go a little bit out of the, the straight path. To Because I think you need to like fill 98% of the flower bed with flowers or something for it to actually spawn the fight. So you just need to make sure that you actually yeah, like get enough. And here I'm going to go back to uh, the first area and then kill the last enemies. And then we're going to overlap both cutscenes here. As you can see the cutscene here is going to come in a little bit. Whoop, and then it just goes away again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, before we go into this boss fight, do you have any uh, donations to, to read out? I do, thank you. We have a $10 donation by Big Al saying, I just love It Takes Two. My partner and I never finished playing it, and I definitely want to pick it up now. Thanks for showing off such a great game for a great cause. Thank you for your donation. We also have a $10 donation by Norex saying, had to donate during my favorite game for a great cause. Thank you so much for your contributions. I am refreshing again, and we still have a bit to go for to meet the Trackmania bonus incentive. So if you want to see that, keep the donations coming. We still have a bit of time to do that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, um, uh, developers, this, this is when you tell us that you have a skip for this boss fight. 
<laughs> I wish we could. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. But you, you get to be a tomato. <laughs> there is actually a bounty for finding a skip to, to this boss fight, so you know, you could do a little bug fix update, you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then much? maybe claim the bounty, you know? <laughs> I think it's like, what, $150 or something for the bounty or something now? Wait, there's an actual bounty? Yeah, oh, yeah. there's an actual there's bounty from the community. <laughs> so a little bug fix update and, uh, you know, nice. we wouldn't say anything. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think I know of any. Yeah, no, I, like, th th this boss fight is just very well um, put together, I feel. Yeah, so the cut, uh, even, like, the checkpoints in this fight is, uh, like, it's only one checkpoint that kind of follows you and gets updated every time uh, you, like, make a new progression in the boss fight. So you can't even hit a later part of the fight and trigger uh, another checkpoint or something. It's uh, yeah, you have to basically do everything. And here we have another safe spot. Yeah. We can just jump over. Uh, the little poison here, uh, or like the roots, we jump over. And then there's a little safe spot here, and then we just don't get hit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's now the last fight so music. far. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually some optimizations that you can do. So coming up, when I get the... I think it's the potato, the next fight. It might be, or the lemon. I don't know. You, you do like three the different... Potato uh, and then climb at the end. Yeah, so I get the potato next time. There's actually a pattern that I'm doing to, uh, to make... to kill all of the roots faster, basically. So I always start by going right here, over to uh, this right part, and then always killing this, this root first, and just optimizing my dashes to, to kill it. And the reason that I'm going over to the right is just uh, you go to the right every time. Uh, there you could kind of go to both, but I need to be on the left side here when uh, these spawn. And then I want to be in the middle of them. So that uh, I can immediately just go in between them. I also want to make sure that I am close enough to Cody so I grab the aggro of all the enemies. So they exactly, don't yeah. chase him around. Um, but yeah, no, the, this boss fight pretty much is like, yeah, you do this one thing, then finally you get back to the boss to like, you know, get rid of some more infection, and then it kind of just repeats like that until it's over. It's a cool boss fight. It's just, it's, uh, it's long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a great speed run boss fight. <laughs> Guess, Sadly, guess there's I'll no uh, safe spot for this uh, this section. I yeah, so we actually have to dodge <laughs> what's coming up here. I guess the main uh, way to save time for you is to just optimize the combat parts. Exactly. Yeah. So here, there's a little optimization when uh, you see the saving in the corner here. We can then do a restart from checkpoint, and then it will all be grown up when we then spawn in. Mm. And then uh, they always smash the same plates, so we know like which ones they're going to hit when. Exactly, yeah. So a little bit about the movement in the game. So you have the slides. So let's say that like, you know, uh, right now is Cody. I want to slide. I can then run and then slide. And I like that you're touching on movement now that we're really, yeah. really, really close to the end of the game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just don't feel like there's been a good way to describe it up to this point. But yeah, there's frog jumps. That's what I'm doing right now between the plates. That's like the long jump that you talked about earlier. Yeah. But you can also do a uh, slide hop. And that's by running, sliding, and then jumping. So it's like three inputs to do it and a direction uh, to get over there. You can also dash to go into the slide. Dash like into one? Or like da dash, dash into a slide. Crouch, yes. slide. You can also do that, yeah. So there's multiple ways of doing it. You can also do it when you're in a downward slope. So uh, there's like yeah, multiple ways of doing it. Close to the camera, let's go. <laughs> yeah, going into the last part about this first boss fight, it's just going to be mostly the same. Optimizing the fight to... Uh, yeah, going to the right, and then I'll, I'll just do a specific pattern all around the, the fight here to make it, to make sure it goes fast. So if you have anything to read out, I think uh, now will be a good time. Perfect. 
dear audience, make some noise because we got a $120 donation by Pancake Turtle with no comment. Although I gotta say the incentive, one of the incentives that we have open right now, which is for the file name in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, it's getting heated in there and the plot is thickening. Not Zelda has been leading for the longest time, but now Andy Grex is leading with $145. So if you want to see your favorite name uh, to, as a name for the file, keep the donations coming. We are not done yet, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. So um, now we're about to finish up this boss fight, and that's the end of the garden level. Uh, and I want to touch on something for the, the next chapter that's coming up, um, because that, <laughs> that chapter that's coming up now, the attic, um, this is the only place where we have whole sub-chapter skips. Because the main, it, you have like a main hub where you then go to the different ones. And uh, conveniently, there are mini games here. Uh, so we're just gonna get to one that we want to go to and uh, kind of just, you know, <laughs> go from there. Uh, there is this uh, fun out of out of bounds um, place that you can get into here. He's gonna so get it. So yeah, you can hit the mini game from the back side here. So uh, right now there was like a wall that blocked us. You could actually also climb something, but lately we found this out of bounds way to do it. But you could actually go all the way up and like some uh, railings uh, beforehand. Like the old route used to like do a top <coughs> route where you were and that, uh, climbing on the lights. And that skipped two whole sub chapters. Yeah, like years of work. <laughs> 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 but we're getting some Rainbow Road action. Hell yeah. Which is fun. So here Lim is going to go for a little bit of a riskier strat and I'm going to go for the safe strat just to make sure that we get it. Ooh, but it seems like Lim got it. Nice. Nice. Ooh, I yeah, I'm, but my speed is really slow though right now, but it's fine. I'll, I'll build it up over time, hopefully. <laughs> so the, the idea here is to just keep jumping when you land to try and like gain as much speed as possible and just zoom down the track. So that's better than actually using the boost pads. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the boost pads are slow. You don't really want to touch them. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, the, the boost gives you a fixed speed. So if you're going too fast, yeah. you actually want to avoid them. But if you're going slow, then you want to hit them. Mm. So it's a fine balance of like, you know, when do you want to hit it and when do you not want to hit them? Because yeah, if, if you're too fast, it just slows you down again and it like resets your speed or something to, to whatever the boost pad is, I guess. Oh, I know a trick here. I wonder if you guys do it. Yes, you do. Yeah. That's and since we're both here, we're just going to keep going instead of going the checkpoint. So yeah, usually one, if one person makes it there, there was a saving in the corner, and then you can restart the checkpoint to teleport the other person up with you. But we were in sync right there, so we could... Uh, so what do you think? We just go. I did not know about that trick. <laughs> 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 yeah, so now we're just falling down to the end of the elevator. Normally you would like ride a disco ball all the way around and down there. Uh, but since it's so far down, uh, we can't just jump and just, you know, slow fall over there to get close enough to... Hit a spawn box, which is inside the, the square, which conveniently spawns a stamp. Nice. Here. We don't get the cool like effects on the feet, though, sadly. Oh. When you play it normally, you get those. Um, yeah, this is actually going to be another section where uh, we're going to be changing our FPS. There's going to be a lot of uh, interactions we have to do, and low FPS. Oh. Uh, we skip. Cutscene first, and then we RCP. <laughs> I was a little bit too fast now. There we go, low FPS. And you'll see that, um, yeah, it's done. It just goes, like, by instantly. Mm. I remember playing this casually, and I had so much, like, me and my partner, when we played it, it there were so many problems in this area, <laughs> because we had high FPS, both of us. So some of the mouse wiggling sections, when I use 800 DPI, just, like, didn't work. Oh, yeah. Also, so. the music here is so good. <laughs> so, shout outs to the composer, honestly. Hell yeah. And uh, look at the right side of the screen. We see Cody moves. He has the best moves in the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's dancing, right? <laughs> Oh, 
I want to clap, but I'm, one of my hands is busy right now. <laughs> right, we're focused. So we know we're gonna hit them. <laughs> But I think before the ending here, if you have uh, something to read out, I think now will be a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. We have a $15 donation by Mutant Aura with no comment and a $5 donation by X will mark the place 122 saying any Gregs. As you can imagine, both of these donations went towards the any Gregs uh, choice for the file choice incentive for Ocarina of Time. If you want to, to, to keep the donations coming and Please uh, allocate them to any incentive that you want, that we have open right now. Thank you. Back to you two. Awesome. So now uh, we are getting very close to the end of the game right now. Um, it is this section left, uh, and then it is the last subchapter, a grand finale. And uh, Cody doesn't need to do anything. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> for him, he can relax because the, the the rest of the run like <laughs> rests on my shoulders. So I have to make sure I perform well here. <laughs> um, so yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <Don't> <laughs> you clamped the speed in the tunnel, right? What? I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> I think it is kept, yeah. but yeah, you don't want to hit any of the slow slowing down parts, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. When, when I prototyped that, there was no speed cap. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. I would actually love that. Should have kept that in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Lem here going into the ending. The ending is a little bit special because it actually takes away a lot of your abilities to move. But if you're airborne, then you can still do movement. So when yeah. we spawn in, the poop is going to... Uh, basically drop us, and then that little drop will give him enough airtime to then start moving, and then he can still have control in this section, because usually you would be very locked down. You can also see the camera here is like really weird, but then you can actually like, yeah, still do movement in this area, and you can see that he always tries to like land on something and then jump immediately, or, oh, nice, I just... Yeah. Wait, he's not allowed to land. Yeah, if I, if I land, I, I, it's slow walk, then it's a walk of shape. Yeah. <laughs> um, time is coming up here really shortly, the moment that they kiss, and that's... Uh, yeah, no, this this is it takes two. It's been a it's been a good run. Good, good time. Oh. <laughs> is this when we let go of the button? Exactly. I keep uh, keep the suspense for a bit. What a great we way to end it. We need to get ready, right? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you did actually do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, thanks too. I uh, really hope you guys enjoyed that run. I hope I didn't throw the sub 146 <laughs> by doing that at the end. <laughs> but yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed it. That was awesome. <laughs> thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for inviting us also. It's been uh, really great fun to see you guys do that. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was, uh, yeah, I was really happy with how that run turned out. Uh, I'm happy you guys got to see everything and stuff, so. Um, was there anything that we haven't discovered yet that you guys know of? I, no. No, <laughs> not my knowledge. No. I don't think so. <laughs> like, there are and then we actually get to see the book for the first time, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are things you didn't do, but that's because you skipped past the entire section. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Might be used in other categories. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, that has been It Takes Two. So, uh, I guess uh, some shout outs. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having us. And uh, yeah, shout out to the community. You can find all the resources on the Discord server. And especially shout out to both Hyper for me back in the day, also Glint and Bytes. You guys know who you, who you are. Yeah, shout outs to the whole It Takes Two Discord community. Everyone there has been fantastic. I remember when I was learning the, the run last year, actually. Um, yeah, no, everyone was just, like, super kind and really, really helpful, you know? So, that was super nice. Uh, so, also, uh, yeah, big shout-outs to our developers here on commentary. So, a huge round of applause for them, please. Yeah, thanks for coming to see all of this. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was a lot of fun. You can, uh, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash Lemura and... Uh, yeah, I think Twitch TV test cyber underscore s. And I, I think that's it. I think that's it for us. Yeah. Yep. Awesome.
Awesome, everyone. Thank you so much, Cypher and Lemura. It was an absolute treasure to see the bewilderment and confusion on <laughs> Chaos and Zodiac's faces. Um, we are not done yet with the event. We have still many runs and many things to come in the, during this event. So we are going into a quick intermission and we will be back right for you. Thank you so much and we'll see you right there.